guys and welcome back to the channel daughter of increase my name is Nate Denise for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith God Christ and expanding the kingdom of God so I'm gonna try to talk slow in this video because I know a lot of you guys have been telling me that I talk fast and I do apologize for that I'm just so used to speaking I guess at a certain speed because I took debate for a while I, I literally took debate for almost a year in um, high school I, yeah, high school, freshman year of high school, so, um, you know, I'm used to speaking, you know, really quickly, but, um, I'm gonna try to slow the pace down in this video, um, I needed something, I have my food in the background, ginger ale, it, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I just wanna go to sleep, but I got work to do, I literally have, like, my laptop right here, doing some work for church, and then I still have to finish up on one more homework assignment <laughs> for church tomorrow since I have class tomorrow. But um, this is going to be day one of my reading vlog. I want to try to make this a three-day reading vlog. I want to try to make it a, a lot more different from the last reading vlog. I did one reading vlog before on, um, I think it was The Harvest of Rubies by Tessa Abshaw. You guys can just click the eye on the screen to check that out. But this one, I am going to um, proactively make this a three-day reading vlog. So this book... Um, I'm going to tell you guys the title in a second, but this book, you, well, you know from the title above, but um, this book is a total of 417 pages, the actual, like, content. So it's 417 pages. I divided that by three, um, and it gave me 139 pages total, but I don't want to, you know, cut off in the middle of a chapter, so I already have how I'm going to um, split this up, which is great. So... First things first, the book that I'm reading. Um, I'm going to be reading The Heart of a King by Jill Eileen Smith. This says The Loves of Solomon. And this is pretty much a bind-up of her novellas on the four loves of Solomon. And I'll um, insert the covers here for each one. But um, she talks about four of the women from Solomon's life, I guess, um, his loves. I don't know if they were his wives or not. But um, you have the first one, which was the Desert Princess, Nama, and this is the cover for that novella. The second one was Abishag, who's the shepherdess. The third was, oh, the third is, sorry, Sitai, the daughter of a pharaoh. And then you have the Queen of Sheba. So these are the four covers of the novella, but with that, she um what she did was she made a bind-up of the novellas and made it put in third person that so that you can get um the perspective of the four women and king solomon at the same time so um yeah this is my first jill eileen read um honestly i literally own all of her books i have not read any of them i do own them on ebook but um i'm excited to get into this i am gonna read this and then read the novellas separately she definitely um suggests that you still read the novellas um because the bind up can be a little confusing i'm gonna read the bind up and then i'm gonna dive into the novella the four different novellas but um i'm gonna read the back of it for you guys so it says get swept away by a story of love loss and longing king solomon could and did have anything he wanted including many women from many lands but for all of his wealth and wisdom did he or the woman he loved ever find what they were searching for in this engrossing novel find yourself whisked away to ancient israel where you'll meet four remarkable women nama the desert princess abishag the shepherdess sitai the daughter of a pharaoh and nicola nick nick Nicola, I don't know how to pronounce it. The name will be on the screen, but um, the Queen of Sheba. She basically gave the Queen of Sheba a name. I'm not sure if that was really her name or not, but the Queen of Sheba. As you experience the world of Solomon through his eyes and theirs, you'll grapple with whether this king's storied wisdom ultimately benefited him and those he loved or betrayed him. So this is biblical fiction romance, and I'm excited to dive into this. I can't wait. Um, so I already have, like I said, everything planned out. So my goal is to read 136 pages, which is going to be a total of 16 chapters today, just alone today. So I do have everything like stuck in the prelude and whatnot. Um, I have my color code system, which you, I've, I've mentioned this in the other video, um, where I did the, uh, reading blog. I have my little annotating pouch here, which has my pens and my post-it notes and my tabs. So... I use, I don't even know where I put that thing, oh, it's over there, um, but I use these Sharpie art pens to mark in my books because they don't bleed through, which I love, um, and then I just use a blue ink pen that's either 0.7 or 0.5, right now I'm just using a crown ink pen, I love these crown pens, they're so great, and they're really, really fine, um, 
I guess I see they're like fine. So I like these pens. Um, and then I just have like a bunch of like clear tabs and post-its in here. I also have index cards and whatnot. So, you know, I have that. But the goal is I'm going to read about five chapters, come back to you guys, let you guys know my thoughts. Um, read five more chapters, let you guys know my thoughts, and then read the last six chapters and let you know my thoughts for the day. I'm going to try to continue to make this a three-day, um, because if I really do like it, I might just continue reading, and I don't want to do that. But I do want to, you know, include clips of me, um, reading, um, and, you know, annotating in the book. So, I don't, like I said, I don't really know much about this. I do own the novellas, the binder, um, the novellas separately, but I've never read anything from Jill, so this will be the first time I'm reading this. And you're not going to see this video until the 30th, um, Tuesday, April 30th, yeah, because that's when this book releases. So when you're watching this video, happy release day to this book. Um, but I definitely wanted to do this um, a, a, a f about five or six days prior to the release so that I could have this video up and ready for Tuesday. So, yes, hi me to the future. I mean, from the past, if that makes sense. Yeah, but um, I love the cover of this, you guys. The colors are stunning to me. I just, I love purple and teal together with pink. I just think it's amazing. So, we have this book. I'm going to start reading for like an hour and see how far I get with an hour. Again, it's only 136 pages. So, let's dive into this book. All right, guys. So, right now it is 6.40 p.m. Let me just close these notifications quickly. Um, but it's 6.40 p.m. Can you see that? Uh, come on, fix. So, 6.40 p.m. I haven't gotten any reading done, um, whatsoever. After I made that intro video, um, I kind of sort of ate, laid down, finished up my work for church, and then conked out. I am extremely tired. I mentioned earlier that, um, I had to be up at 6, or well, I woke up at 5. I had to leave my house at 6.40. I have to be at the dentist for 7.30. And, um, I basically only got probably an hour of sleep last night, so I really didn't sleep. Um, so I took a much needed nap. But, yes, I'm printing out some things for, oops, I'm printing out some things from Bible study. I finished up the other work that I needed to do. I just need to work on the church's newsletter, but I'll do that later. And, um, I need to finish up my homework. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to finally tackle this book um 136 pages like i said i'm gonna read five chapters i'm probably just gonna read all the way through um and come back when i'm done i don't know um but yeah i'm going to finally tackle this book so it's 6:41. i'm actually gonna start at yeah whatever i'm gonna start now um and i'm gonna read the first five chapters and come back and let you guys know my thoughts okay guys so i'm back um right now it's 11:10 p.m I've just been so busy uh, catching up on some work for church that I haven't been able to read the way I wanted to. <laughs> but um, let me just tell you guys, show you guys the time so you guys can see. Um, it's 11.10. I'm still really, really tired. But 11.10 uh, p.m. And I just read six chapters. Like, I literally just sat and read six chapters. Um, and so far, I'm actually enjoying it so the first woman we're introduced to is nama the desert princess and um yeah i'm really really enjoying it so far nama is very much um in love with solomon she's known solomon since she was 10 i believe she is 15 at the time that she comes back to port and they're 16 <coughs> and she's 16 when they get married so um yeah, the first six chapters is basically Nama being introduced, um, her declaring her love for him, and then having her father go to King David to marry her off to Solomon. And I'm loving Solomon because he does have feelings for her, like he likes her, but he doesn't want to marry for the sole purpose of an alliance. He wants the type of marriage that King David and Bathsheba had, Bathsheba had that was more so based on love so i'm really enjoying um solomon right now and i'm really enjoying the scripture references a lot of them are coming from song of solomon as well as um i think it's second kings or first kings let me just check they're coming from second samuel and second kings and things like that um it's around basically the time that um king david has promised to pronounce um solomon as the the next king the next heir but he hasn't done so yet so his 
older one of his older brothers one of his older half brothers Ad, 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 Adonai um, that's not Adonai because Adonai is guy obviously um I don't know how to pronounce his name and I'm looking for it right now I can't find it Adonijai I don't know. One of his half brothers. The older half brother there is mentioned in um First Kings. If you read First Kings chapter one, you'll know what I'm talking about. But his older brother, um, older half brother, basically sought to become king himself without consulting King David. Um, so yeah, right now with chapter six, we have King David being sick. Um, and this is the part in the scriptures where um they have decided, the council have decided to get him a virgin. I think the virgin's the virgin's name was Abishag. Um, they decided to get him a virgin to just warm his body, but he did not, um, have sex with her. So it was basically, he was obtaining a new wife, but he did not know her in that sense. But, um, so far, I'm really liking it. I'm loving seeing the scriptures, um, come together from First Kings and Second Samuel, as well as from Song of Solomon and how it's all intertwining to make this kind of romantic story. It's really sweet so far. I'm really enjoying it. I have tapped it up already. Um, normally I have orange tabs, ran out of orange, don't feel like opening up a new pack, so I'm using the red tabs to mark up. But yeah, I'm going to continue reading. I'm going to read chapter 7 all the way to chapter 16, and then come back to you guys. Hopefully I can do this before 12.30 because I'm exhausted. Um, I was going to read some other books, but that didn't happen. So yeah, I have to read this and go to bed, that way I can get up at 6 o'clock in the morning to finish up my homework, because I didn't even finish that. So yeah. I'm going to continue reading, and then when I come back, I'll probably do a flip through of, like, what I annotated and tell you guys my favorite parts so far. Alright, guys, so, it is 12.38. Um, I finished at 12.30, but I've just been cleaning up my mess. But, um, yep, 12.38 right now, if you guys can see. And I finished the first 136 pages of this beautiful book. And so far, I see me giving this a 4 stars or 4.5 stars. I'm not sure if it's going to be a 5 star until I finish it, but so far, I'm enjoying it. Um, so in chapter 6, we're introduced to Abishag, who is the second woman, um, or the second love of Solomon. And she is the shepherdess, and also the virgin that was basically brought to King David to warm up his body and warm his bed. Um, let me just say, I am loving Bathsheba so much in this story. She is such a phenomenal woman. Um, I'm just, I'm loving the strength and, um you know, the faith that she has is such beautiful, it's like, beautiful to read. Um, there's definitely, like I said, a lot of scripture being quoted. I have so many purple tabs in here, it's unbelievable. Like, um, the scriptures are being quoted from, um, Song of Solomon chapter 2, First Kings chapters 1 to 1 and 2, um, Second Samuel and stuff like that. So, I'm really loving seeing the scriptures come to life if that makes sense, because I'm doing BSF, we're in the um, final few days or weeks of finishing up with our study on Kings, and, um, you know, we studied David with First and Second Samuel, and then we also did First Kings, so a lot of the scripture references within this book, I know because I've been studying with BSF, so it's kind of awesome to see those scriptures kind of come into life, especially the situation with um, Solomon and his older half-brother, I can't ever pronounce his name. His name will be on the screen. But, um, yeah, that whole scene there. Um, the scene with Abishag and stuff like that. So, a lot of these scriptures are, like, coming to life for me. And I'm actually visualizing them even better because I'm reading this book. But, um, I'm definitely loving it. Abish Ab Abishag is, um, definitely an interesting girl. She is very artsy. Um, but what I can say... It's interesting, but I also do understand considering the time that this was, like, written back in that time. You know, there was always insta-love. But this is very much insta -lovey. Um, I think for me, Nama, the fact that Nama and Solomon knew each other for about five years or so, and they had that time to, you know, grow their love, that's normal. But the whole romance with Abishag, it's, it's just a little insta -lovey for me. But again... I know that back in that time, that was normal. Um, King Solomon definitely makes some stupid moves. He is now King Solomon before he was just Solomon. Now he's King Solomon. Um, King David has died. Crushed my heart. Um, he has died. And, yeah, his brother is still being sneaky. I'm up to the part where um, his brother is being sneaky. 
um, and asking to marry um, Abishag. And he refers to Abishag as the Shunammite. So, I'm up to that part. And, I don't know. I'm enjoying it so far. You know, I'm making a lot of markings. Um, there are some parts that are sad that I just, uh, it breaks my heart. Like, I couldn't see me living back in that time. Um, just to have to, sh have to share your husband with another woman. I couldn't do it. Um, Nama did have their first son, which is Ro Robam. Ro Ro His name would be on the screen. She had that son, and now she's pregnant again. Um, and Beth Sheba did something real slick. There was a slick scene. I was like, ooh, she, she, she a little slick one. So, um, there is, I don't even know what chapter this is. Hold on. I think this is chapter 16. Yeah, in chapter 16, it was like the middle part, um, of chapter 16. Uh, Nama is telling Bathsheba that, you know, she's pregnant again, basically. Bathsheba was like, okay, another son, I'm sure of it. But, um, I would not mind a granddaughter if God so desires. So, She's in the room with Nama, and she's also in the room with Abishag. And now, at this point, Abishag, um, in her mind, she's think she thinks she's the wife of Solomon now because there was a little stupid scene that made me mad um, with Solomon, like declaring his love for her right after his father died. Didn't understand that, but whatever. Um, but yeah, so Bathsheba is sitting between. I guess she's sitting between Nama and Abishag, and she pats Nama's knees, and then she pats. Um, Abishag's knees and then she's like I have two wonderful girls to love right here the words felt right and awkward at the same time but the queen seemed to pay their discomfort no mind so basically Nama doesn't know the situation with um, Abishag and Solomon she knows that Solomon obviously has some type of attraction to her but he do she doesn't know that her husband basically plans to take Abishag as his second wife so that was a little awkward, and Nama already has problems with her, just, you know, jealousy issues, but, um, yeah, so far, I'm enjoying it, um, I'm really enjoying this so much, I will continue to read tomorrow, I'm actually going to try to plot <laughs> the pages for tomorrow, I'm trying to do this, like I said, in three days, so, maybe that's right, I don't know. Sorry if you guys hear that coughing, but okay. So, I have this cut off. So, I'm going to read pages 137 to page 271 tomorrow. I'm not sure how many pages that is. I'll put it on the screen because I'm tired right now. Oh, actually, I could tell you. So, I said 271 because I'm going to figure out how many pages that is. So. 271 take away 137 okay so 134 pages and like i said i would have to read 139 i think pages a day so yeah that's pretty much good so 134 pages that's the plan for tomorrow um this might end up being a four day reading blog only because i have class tomorrow and i'm gonna have a lot of time to read and i also have to finish my homework that i didn't finish and i need to wake up in like six hours so <laughs> I did, I will show you guys some things that I did though quickly because, you know, this part here, it says, waiting would make love grow and his heart needed to heal more than it needed another wife. Um, I just drew a little tiny heart because I, I just really loved that little part. Um, and then there was a scene, oh yeah, the scene with Solomon declaring his love for Abishag right after his father died. I said, but you couldn't wait, bro, <laughs> with the straight face because like... You can't wait to tell her you love her till after the morning period, like, bruh. And, oh, I think it's in chapter 16, the scene with, um, oh my god, where is it? I think it's a scene with his brother that makes me mad that I drew, like, an angry face, but I can't find it. I'm gonna find that, so give me a second. Okay, so I can't find it right now, and I'm extremely tired. My eyes are drooping, so what I'm going to do tomorrow is just flip you guys through what I've read so far. I'm um, showing you guys how I like, annotated, and then I'll get into reading. So, yeah, day one of this uh, reading vlog completed. 
I'm gonna head to bed. <laughs> All right, guys. So today's the 25th, so it's five days before the release date of this beautiful book, and I'm getting ready to jump back into this book. Um, like I said, I think I said I wanted to read 134 pages today, so it is 11:44 right now. I want to read until about two o'clock ish. I'm probably gonna finish before then, but I definitely want to read this until about two o'clock two o'clock ish so that I can then finish my um last assignment which is to do my sermon at for Bible study so that I can take that when I go to my minister's training class today but um yeah I'm gonna do that but yeah I have some creamy spinach dip here because I don't know I wanted some dip, chip and dip and I got some regular chips here um I have a coffee I, I ran some errands for my mom this morning so I have me a hot coffee it normally it's a cold coffee but I believe this is the donut shop coffee with um, the Cold Stone sweet cream creamer and some French vanilla creamer. I did order some flavored syrups, so I'm waiting for that to come in the mail because I definitely want to show you guys some like coffee recipes um, because I do like to drink flavored coffee such as rose flavored, strawberry flavored, lavender flavored coffee is like my all-time favorite coffee. So I do have that coming in the mail, so once that comes, I'll be able to you know, do more interactive um, videos, but... Yeah, I'm going to dive back into this. So I left off at bait, um, chapter 16. I'm going to be diving into 17. I'm going to read chapter 17 all the way to chapter 33. So yeah, um, I'll probably come back when I get to like chapter 25-ish, 24-ish um, to discuss some things with you guys. So we'll see. I'm going to get back into reading now. It is currently 12.45, 12.44. So it's 12.44 p.m. And I just read up to chapter 22. So I read chapter 17 and 22. And um, I don't know. I, okay, I will say that I am enjoying the story. I do have to read the story with the mindset of understanding um, that back in those times, back in that era, they did romance a bit different. Like I said, I feel like the romance between King Solomon and Abishag is just too quick. Sorry about the beeping. Um, I, we changed the batteries, but every now and then it does beep. So I don't know what's going on with that. But it seems like every time I want to record a video, the fire thingies beep. Um, the smoke detector, sorry. The smoke detectors beep out of the blue. But when I'm not recording, they're not beeping. So I don't know. But... Anyways, as I was saying, so the romance between King Solomon and Abishag is a little bit too quick for me. Um, it's a little bit insta-lovey. It's, uh, it's a little disgusting, honestly, because Abishag was married to his father. Though it was only in title, she really wasn't the wife. She was more so of the nursemaid. Not nursemaid, but like, um, uh, she nursed him. She was a nurse to his father. It still disgusts me. However, I do love the fact that Abishag is very, very friendly with um, Nama. Nama is very much hesitant. Um, she definitely, you know, makes her dislike known of Abishag um, to King Solomon and Abishag. She did have a conversation um, with Abishag telling her, you know, I'm his first wife and my son is the heir and da-da-da-da. And Abishag is like, okay, that's fine. I know you're the first wife. You will always be the first wife. I am um, insignificant compared to you. But I also know that at the end of the day, I'm not just going to be his last wife. He will have other wives. And then she, she wants to be friends with Nama. So I really must commend Abishag. She is very much um, a real woman. Like... She's a woman. I, I I love seeing women like that in stories where it's like they're arguing with, about guys. Um, but you have the one person who's really much jealous and doesn't have a problem letting you know how she feels. But then you have the other woman who's like, okay, let me be the big person and just let you know it's okay. Like, Abishag has my respect. Now, again, King Solomon is pissing me off with all this. Um, we are introduced to Setai, uh, the Pharaoh's daughter. We are introduced to her. And she's a little scheming one. She's scheming already, like... I don't like it. She plotting on something. Mm. I'm not really liking her right now. 
um she was only introduced for like a short chapter but yeah so right now i'm at um it's called an interlude it's interlude it's page 181 and i know at the beginning there is a thing called a prelude right yeah there's a prelude at the beginning um, and it just says the teacher, and then there's an interlude, um, and then there's also a grace note, and I think it ends with something else. Uh, yeah, it ends with something, so, I don't know. But so far, of the two, I am, of the three women mentioned so far, there is Nama, the Desert Princess, right? Am I getting this right? Yeah, the Desert Princess, which is his first wife. Abishag was his father's wife, but now it's um, his wife, so that's his second wife. And she is the shepherdess. Um, and then we were introduced to Sitai, the daughter of the pharaoh. So I am interested in learning more about Sitai because from what I've read so far, she's very much an outspoken woman. Um, but she also has a little scheming to do. I'm not sure how old these girls are. I don't think they're above 18. I think they're around the ages of 15 to maybe 17. Um, so it is taking me some time, but again, I have to read with the mindset of understanding that back in those times, they were marrying at the age of 12 and 13 and having kids by 14. So, you know, and it's kind of awkward because back in the day that was so normal, but nowadays it's just, you know, frowned upon. So I don't know. But so far, I am enjoying it. The writing is pretty interesting. Again, I haven't read the novellas, so I'm definitely going to read the novellas because I know that this is sort of a compilation or bind-up of the novellas. But it's also um, a different story at the same time because King Solomon's point of view is written in this. Again, King Solomon, he's irritating me so much. Like, I don't... For a wise man, um, he's pissing me off with romance. Um, I will say the scene came... The two scenes came up with his stepbrother stepbrother his half-brother asking to marry a bishag and he killed him i read that in the bible and then also when he was having the conversation with god asking for wisdom and god basically granted it granted it to him so i read those parts in the bible so i will say um i definitely highly suggest you read through um first kings and the song of solomon before you read this because there's a lot of references to um song of solomon i literally just went through a whole three pages and wrote song of solomon six verses one through twelve because it literally was like the whole entire <laughs> chapter um so i wrote that so again i'm keeping track of everything this is very much um it's plot driven but there's a lot of scriptural context in here which i'm loving um so yeah i am there i just have this much left to read right here so i'm going to read these last few pages or last few chapters um and then come back to you guys and let you guys know my thoughts as i'm done or ending for the day and um yeah tomorrow i'll probably just have to read about 145 pages or so and then i'll be done so i'm excited again five days before the release of this book i am so stoked i'm actually working on an image to post on instagram um, but yeah, I'm probably gonna talk about this on IGTV as well, or probably just my Instagram stories, <laughs> I don't know. But, um, yeah, I'm so far enjoying it, I'm loving the writing, I'm loving the, um, context of scriptures being used in here, and, um, I'm loving seeing the characters in such a weird dynamic, I don't wanna say it's weird dynamic, but it's just like, okay, you have these multiple wives, and you have concubines, and, you <laughs> again, I'm loving Bathsheba, she's amazing, but yeah, I'm going to end here because this thing is pissing me off. These are smoke detectors, so hopefully it doesn't beep when I come back.
literally this thing was not beeping the entire time now it's beeping but it's 147 and i said i wanted to be done by two o'clock so i could finish up my homework but yes i read from chapters 17 to 34 of um the heart of a king and i don't know um, okay, so again, like I stated earlier, I do love um, Nama and Abishag. I'm more so leaning towards Abishag because she is kind. Um, Nama is annoying. But the one that I do not like, I just dislike her altogether, is Sitai, um, the Pharaoh's daughter. She is very much cocky. She's bossy. She feels like everything is owed to her. And she's always trying to find a way to change Solomon's opinion about God versus her goddess. Like, it, it irritates me how annoying she can be how whiny she is the fact that she went to um queen mother bathsheba to like get bathsheba to talk to Sal. like it it annoyed me so much like oh i don't like her i've come to the conclusion that i don't like satai like whatsoever i don't care if she has a redemption chapter like i don't like her <laughs> um as a wife and um i did like the parts where solomon felt guilt about sort of disobeying the laws of god as far as like going to egypt like the whole going to egypt thing everybody told him not to go and he was like well i'm gonna go and i'm not gonna change you know my mind i'm not gonna break the laws but you went anyway and broke the law even though it wasn't intended for you to break the law it just happened that you broke the law and it kind of reminds me like when god tells you not to do something and you're like well i'm not gonna do it but i'm still gonna hang around these people like you're going to be influenced negatively regardless because it's something that you're not supposed to do. And, you know, I know for me, like, if my mom tells me not to hang out with certain people back in the day, I would be like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm hang out with them, but I'm not going to be influenced by them. And there were situations when I hung out with certain people and I got influenced negatively by them, even though I didn't plan to get negatively influenced. So I don't know. It was really good. Um, yeah. So I only have 145 pages left to go. The last of it. I definitely could still breeze through this. But I got homework to do. So, like I said, so far this is a 4 star. I was doing a 4.5 star. But 4 star right now because Sitai is making me mad. I don't like her. She's pissing me off. Um, I'm interested in reading about Queen Sheba. Queen of Sheba now. Like, I'm really excited to read about her in this book. Because there's really not much mentioned about her in the Bible. Um, you know, she gets a little few parts. But what I am noticing is that Nama is more of the intellectual person. Abishag is more of the artsy person. Sitai is very much... She reminds me of a serpent. Um, not even gonna lie. Like, every time I hear her talk and plot things out, I think of a serpent. She's very sneaky and cunning, and I don't like her. I, I don't like her. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I'm enjoying it so far. So I'm gonna come back to you guys tomorrow. I might even finish this today, but I'm gonna hold off and finish this tomorrow. Because I wanna make this a three-day vlog. So... Um, yes, that's it so far. Like I said, I'm loving it, and um, I highly would recommend you guys check it out, um, because it is pretty good. The writing style is very much interesting to me, and again, I think I'm enjoying it a lot more because there's a lot of reference to scripture. Um, like, where is it? I know I just marked it. Yeah, like this whole page came from First Kings eight fourteen to twenty one, and it was the speech that King Solomon made um at the time of the temple being completed. Um, so yeah, I'm loving this. I'm really liking his point of view and the, and the women's point of view and how it's all meshing together to create this story. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying this so far. So I do recommend this and I'll come back to you guys tomorrow with my final thoughts. Probably not my final thoughts. Um, my thoughts on the, the last third and then I'll probably record again one more day, but I'm gonna go because the phone is not ringing. So yeah. Bye. <laughs>
I just read chapters 35 to 39, which was this little bunch here, and pretty much we're introduced to uh, Sheba, the Queen of Sheba, which they call her Nicola, or Nic I don't know how to pronounce that name, but um, yeah, she's introduced in chapter 38, but chapter 35 to 37 is pretty much Sitai still getting on my nerves, she's still a little serpent to me, I'm um, sorry if you guys hear my son. But um, she's very much a serpent and very sneaky. I can't stand her. I mentioned this before. I just hate her as a character. Like, she plays her role well. I guess out of the four women, she's like the sneaky type. But she's also Egyptian. So considering the time frame back in the day, I guess that works well with her. But um, I still personally dislike her as a character. Anyways, um, Beth Sheba dies. I want to cry. She died. And it was so sad because she was just doing well. So we have the funeral with that and we see Solomon losing his mind. For all the wisdom that he was given, he was very stupid when he when it comes to like romance. Um, and I mentioned this previously in one of like the other clips where I talked about how Solomon is very much a wise man when it comes to like finances and you know, war and whatnot. But for some reason when it comes to the women and breaking the law of bringing these foreign women into the land, he's just so dumb and it irritates me like, ugh. But, um, yeah, so far I'm loving Nicola. I'm going to just say the Queen of Sheba. I'm liking her so far. She seems to very much be a much more mature woman versus the other three, like I said. Um, so, I guess a breakdown for me, I'm loving Abishag um, as, like, even though she's the second wife, I really do love her the most because she's very much friendly, kind, sweet. Um, she, she's amazing. Nama would be second for me. Um, she's a little bit whiny. But considering she's the first wife, she was the first love, it makes sense why she's the way she is. So I can understand her, but I still prefer a B-shag. Um, as far as Sitai, I hate her. Um, <laughs> just I strongly dislike her as a character. Though, in those few chapters before Queen Chiba died, um, I felt like, I don't know, I felt like she was trying to redeem herself. But then her she she had this thing where she had to dress up in the finest egyptian clothes to go and try to bring comfort to solomon because she wasn't getting attention and obviously comfort back in that time was basically sex so you know she just irritates me so oh i hate her I, you guys i don't like her so right now i'm at chapter 40 i have about 11 chapters to go i'm on page 315 so i have 100 pages because this is 417 my water please and that is my son, so I'm sorry. Come on, this is my small water. <laughs> so yeah, I'm with my son and his father right now. So that's why you see a different background and you hear noise. But um, yeah. Sit up, they can't see you. Hi. So yeah, um, so yeah, I have about 102 pages left to go. I don't know what's going to happen. I think the last portion is going to really more so focus on the Queen of Sheba. But we'll see. I really want to see how all four of these women interact together. I already see how Nama and Abisha, which is the first and second wife, interact because they had a little moment of becoming friends, which I appreciated. You don't really see much interaction with Sitai and Abisha and Nama, but it makes sense because Abisha and Nama, both um, they both worship... Adonai, which is God, and Sitai is a foreigner from Egypt, and she worships some cat goddess or something like that. Um, also, Sitai might be pregnant, which, I don't know. I don't know if Abishag ever got pregnant. I know that Nama has two of Solomon's kids. She has a son and a daughter by him. I don't know if Abishag ever have got pre gotten pregnant because they don't mention it, but Sitai, um, the night that she went to comfort him, which was basically that sex, um, after his mom died, she stayed with him for three days in his bedchamber, and she said she felt like her stomach quickened. So, we'll see. I hope she's not pregnant, because I feel like she's a hot mess, but whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm going to tackle these last hundred pages, and then tell you guys my final thoughts. I might come back when I get to chapter, like, 50, and let you guys know. I'm not sure. We'll see. No, I'm going to come back after I get to chapter 46. So when I'm done with chapter 46, I'm going to come back to you guys, let you guys know my thoughts. And then I will make a final video tomorrow um, just going through my feelings and thoughts on this book. Right now, I'm still thinking this is going to be a four-star read, not a five-star. Um, definitely a four-star for sure. 
but we'll see if it ends off making a five star. We'll see. But yeah, I'm going to now continue reading. Um, like I said, chapter 40, so I'm going to read 40 to 46. And hopefully Solomon redeems himself and, and he's not a continuous douchebag because that's how I feel he is right now. And as I read this, I have to keep in mind that back in the day, like, having multiple wives was the norm. And I can't stand it because it's irritating me that these women just was, like, throwing themselves at him. And hating on each other. Like, it's just like, why do you hate each other when he's the one marrying each of you? And then on top of that, not only do he have, have like, wives, but he also has concubines. It, it doesn't make sense. Sorry about that noise my son is making. Stop. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to continue reading. Hey, guys. So it is Saturday, April 27th, 6, 21 p.m., and I was supposed to do this video earlier, but my mom and I, we went out, we did some things. Um, we went to Michael's, we went and did laundry. Um, we did a lot of things today, and I'm just now done relaxing. Like, I put all the laundry up. Um, I look, and there it goes again. I don't know what it is when I record. Like I said previously, it this thing beeps. But, um, yeah. The stuff on my bed, that uh, little pillow and that um, kind of like rug looking thing is for my prayer mat and i actually did go to five below today and bought a new yoga mat because my yoga mat that i was using um it was just you know really dirty and i use it specifically for working out in yoga and i wanted something that would specifically be for prayer that would be saturated in prayer saturated in you know um i guess the spirit of god if that makes sense so i did go and get a new yoga mat for five dollars so i have that to go with this but um yeah, we went to Michael's. We got some more of these rolling carts. So I told you guys before how I wanted the rose gold in black. Well, I'm still going to get the rose gold. Um, just have to order it online, unfortunately. But we did get white. I got a white. My mom got a white and a red. So, oh my god, that thing is annoying. So I'm going to try to lift this up. So it's right here. Um, I'm going to organize my books and all that so pay all this behind me no mind it's not messy it just looks messy because i just threw things up there those are actually shirts i want to show you guys okay so i don't know if you guys remember this shirt i made this shirt for fun at my son's father's house um and it's a daughter of increase shirt that says john 330 on it in hot neon pink and I made this at his house just for fun because I really wanted a shirt um, that was thought of increase. So I told you guys how I was working on shirts. So I finally got a chance to actually create two of the shirts. Um, so they say the same thing. They're just different colors. So this one is black with bubblegum pink. And it just says daughter of increase on the front. And on the back it has the John 330. He must increase but I must decrease scripture. So yeah, I really like it. Um, and then I have it also in this kind of like ash gray color with purple font. So, I'm thinking about editing this font and making this one a little bit bigger. I'm not sure yet, but um, I'm actually going to put the shirts on later on, take some photos. But yeah, anyway, this is a reading vlog. So, as you guys know, I finished The Heart of a King on Friday at my son's father's house i finished it and here it is the heart of a king by joe eileen smith it is the loves of solomon um this is a compilation of all four novellas but it's also kind of like a twist with edit parts so it's different but similar um like i said jill definitely suggests that you read the novellas um for better understanding i actually enjoy this thoroughly i gave it four stars um yeah, I gave it four stars. The reason why is because I felt like there was something missing. Like, I was really intrigued by okay. the character. Yeah, so you guys probably heard my mother. She was asking for my soda. <laughs> but, yeah. So, um, four star rating. I enjoyed it a lot. I really do love the characters in this. I love the story that she created using scriptures from Song of Solomon as well as uh, Second Kings and um, Second First First Kings and Second Samuel. I love that. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. King Solomon pissed me off. Um, he is just so ignorant. I feel like for the wisest man, he was really stupid romance-wise. Totally annoying. King David, Queen Bathsheba. I, Bathsheba, I love them so much. I was so sad when he died. Like, I wanted to cry. I, I literally was, like, on the verge of tears when they both died. Um, especially Bathsheba because it just happened, like, out of the blue with her dying. Like, there was nothing... There was no foreshadowing to her dying. It just, like, you spoke to her one day, the next day she's dead. Didn't understand that. Literally broke my heart. But, um, okay, so let's go through the four wives in this. Now, keep in mind, 
King Solomon has over 700 wives and 100 concubines, or about 700 wives and 100 concubines, which I don't, I don't get. I, I don't get it. But anyways, I gotta remember this was written back in that time. So his first wife, Nama. I enjoyed Nama a lot. I really loved her as a first wife. She definitely played the role of the first wife um, pretty well. She wanted to be the only wife that he had, but understanding that he's a king. Kings back in that time had multiple wives who have uh, multiple heirs. So I loved her. She definitely played the role of, like I said, the role of the first wife pretty well. Um, she was a little whiny for me, a little whiny, especially when he married Abishag, the second wife. She definitely was really, really whiny. Um, speaking of Abishag, I loved her. Oh my god, she is such a sweet girl. She had such a pure heart. I just loved everything about her, and I loved that she understood her role, I guess, as a wife, and that she wasn't going to be the second or last wife, you know? She knew that there was going to be more wives after her. I loved how she handled the situation with Nama when Nama tried to come at her. I ain't like that, but Abishag handled it really well, and I loved it so much. She definitely was trying to be on friendly terms with um, with Nama. Um, the third wife, Sitai, which was the Pharaoh's daughter. I hated her. Um, I'm not even gonna lie. Hate is a strong word, I know, but I just disliked her character. She was very much a serpent to me. She was sneaky. She really tried to use her beauty and her body a lot, which I could not stand. And I know there's a portion. I can't find it right now. You guys see all these tabs, but in the story, um, they tell King Solomon not to go to Egypt because, um, you know, it's against the, the law that God gave them for them to enter the, into the land of Egypt to take wives from them, horses and stuff like that. And he was like, no, I'm just going to go check because I, I believe the Pharaoh had took a place called Gezer or Gezer. Uh, I don't know. It was some portion of land that belonged to um, the Israelites and he took it. So he went to have a conversation and then the Sittai was like, you know what? I want to be his wife. Da, 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 da. And I think that's where... Solomon went wrong um, is when he broke that law, that one fundamental law, even though God forgave him for that, that one law that you broke, that one sin basically caused a lot of problems for you woman wise, which I thought was funny. Um, but yeah, Sitai was one that I just, I did not like her at all. Now, the Queen of Sheba, which they call her Nicola, Nicola, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but I'll put her name on the screen. I loved her so much. Oh my God. Like, she was such a smart woman. She was definitely King Solomon equal because she was a queen as well. You know, you know, they both up in that high ranking king queen, but, um, she definitely had a lot of common sense. There was a time where I thought she was going to do something stupid. Um, and then she felt wrong about i guess convicted in a sense about doing it and decided not to especially i love that she was getting to know more about god that like she was really interested in knowing about god um i will say king solomon pissed me off in the last few chapters because he was just too too tempting um he was really trying to tempt queen the queen of sheba so much and it was just like really you're doing the most like he pissed me off but overall i loved it um, definitely if I had to rate the wives, like, one through four, which I said, this sounds terrible, but fourth place, definitely Sitai. I don't like her. Sitai is annoying. Um, third would have to be to go to, um, Nama, who is the, okay, so Sitai is the third wife, so she definitely would get fourth place. The third place would go to Nama, who was the first wife. Oh, second place, I don't even know. I think it would have to go to Nicola, who was the Queen of Sheba. She was the fourth and you know, the fourth wife in the story. And first place goes to the second wife, um, Abishag, because Abishag was such a woman. She was such a caring person. I just loved everything about her. Um, again, I loved all of the scriptures. Like, you can see a lot of purple tabs in this. I don't know if you have them. So, there's quite a few purple tabs um, because there was so much scripture reference that I, I loved it. But, um, you know, a, a bunch of good quotes. I can, you know, I'll read a few of my favorite quotes to you guys. That's what I will do because I think that's great. Some... Um, Let's see. Nope, not that one. I think all my favorite ones come from the... Okay, now here we go. So, um, Beth Sheba was talking to Nama, who was um, the first wife. And I guess she felt like she wanted to be everything that King Solomon needed. But, you know, the queen spit some knowledge at her. She was like, you will never be all that he needs, dear girl. Only God can give us all that we need. Only he can feed the hungriest places in our soul. Beautiful. So, if you guys hear that hammering... My landlords are downstairs in the basement, <laughs> and they're right under my feet. So, yeah. Um, I, I'll do, like, two more, and I really can't stand this beeping, so I'm sorry about the beeping, you guys. Sorry. But, um, with the smoke detector, and it only happens when I'm getting ready to record, which I don't get, but whatever. 
Oh, here's one. When King Solomon was thinking, I, I think this is about the time he was thinking about his marriage to Sittai. Um, yeah, I think this is after his marriage to Sittai. He has a thought, and he's like, the wrong woman could ruin a king. So true. He was such the wisest man. Um, you know, he did good with Nama. He did good with Amari and Abishag. They both um, knew God. But when he married Sittai, it was just like she wanted nothing to do with God. She didn't care about God. She really just was concerned about her goddess and proving um, King Solomon wrong and trying to change his views, I guess. And ugh, irritated me. Um, what's another one? What's another quote that I like? Mm. Here we go. Um, where Solomon was talking to Sita, he was like, Our God does not need a place to live, but we need a place to find him, which is so true. God does not have to dwell in one specific place. He doesn't, you know, dwell in the Ark anymore. The Ark of the Covenant, the covenant of the Ark, Ark of the Covenant. You guys know I'm a little crazy right now. Did all this cleaning. But, um, you know, we, we go to church because... It's easier for a lot of people to access him from church. It's hard for other people or most people to access him anywhere they are. Like, I can access God right here in my room, right here um, on this chair. I can access him in the bathroom. Like, it, it's hard. And I guess back then, you know, they didn't really have a specific... I don't know how to explain it, but I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. It's, like, hard to understand. Like, hard for me to explain. Um, but, yeah. And let's see, let's see, let's see. Where's the last one? One more, one more. Oh, okay, no. Two more. So this was one Bathsheba said, um, and it says, Sometimes suffering brings people together in a way prosperity never can, which I thought was so true because suffering has pain, but suffering also has a purpose, which I, I just love, um, you know. Oh, here's another one. Prayer does not always give us the answers we seek. Though God may forgive, he does not stop the consequences of our actions. Ooh. And then sacrifices alone do not please our God, but a broken and contrite heart he will not despise. Like, come on. Beautiful. Um, okay, and here is the final two. Or well, the final one. Um, it was more so of a question that was written, but it says, was temptation so subtle, even wisdom could not win over it. And I don't know, for me, that makes me think like, you know, the little things that we say, um, we're not going to be influenced by like hanging out with the wrong crowd. We're like, oh yeah, we're not going to be influenced by them. But it's the subtle things that they say, the subtle things that they do in which we begin to change and don't really realize it until it's too late, until we're too far gone. And I know for me, that was the case. I used to hang around the wrong type of people, do the wrong, you know, hang around the wrong type of people and be like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. And then, you know, they'll say something and I'll be intrigued by it. And then I'm like, okay, cool. Let me try that out. And then, you know, before long, I'm far gone. Like, you know, I didn't, you know, think that would happen. Um, and then he said, God had a purpose in all things, whether he understood it or not. Fearing God mattered most. Um, so, overall, I love this book. It was amazing. Um, I'm going to have a full-blown video review of this coming. I told you guys, video reviews are going to be coming really, really soon. I'm just going to try to figure out. Probably have to do review, like book reviews on a separate day because there's so many videos and stuff that I, I want to do. So, I might include a third day of, like, recording videos. But, The Heart of a King by Jill Eileen Smith, I definitely would recommend it. However, I would say, if you haven't studied um, Song of Solomon, if you haven't studied uh, Second Samuel or First Kings, I definitely would say read through it. Not study it, but read through it. Because I know that when you read biblical fiction, sometimes your views of the actual text in scripture can be misconstrued and um like the queen of sheba never i don't think she really ever had a name in the bible they just called her the queen of sheba i know that abishag was a real um wife of solomon's i know that he did marry a shepherdess and i know about the pharaoh's daughter i don't know if her name was really sitai or not but like um you know there's just things i feel like people need to understand let me fix this before this cuts off and it's gonna cut off anyway I'm sorry, you guys. I don't even know where my other remote is. Okay. I'm just going to mute that. But, um, you know, there's just certain times when you can read biblical fiction um, where you can get confused with what's real in the Bible and what's not real. So I, I don't think you have to read the Bible, but just understand that um, as you're reading biblical fiction, I would say 
have Google around, have your Bible around because it will help you to understand. Like for me, I know, like I said, I went through and found a lot of things that pertain to scripture. And I was like writing those scriptures out, reading through the scriptures as I was reading the stories, which actually takes it a little bit longer for me to read biblical. All the purple tabs are scripture related. So like it takes me a little bit longer to read through biblical fiction sometimes because I really want to be as accurate and understand what's really going on. Um, but like, you know, I make sure to have my Bible out. I, I really use the Holy Bible app and just search things um, or I go on Google and search because a lot of the times they're written in like the New Testament, the New Living Translation on the NIV. This one I just wrote, um, read First Kings 2 and just draw an arrow and then put an asterisk here and then ended the asterisk on the other side because that whole portion was taken from there. I think that happened like two or three more times in this book. Yeah, here we go. So like this asterisk and this asterisk was from 1 Kings 2, 20 to 24. So um, I definitely would say make sure that you read um, and know your Bible and understand that it's biblical fiction. It's based off biblical events and biblical people and biblical stories, but it is also fiction at the same time. So you do need to understand what is fiction and what is truth. Um, but yeah, again, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I would recommend this book. It's really amazing. It's one of those books that will have you so mad, but also have you laughing at the same time and make you feel so many emotions. I really felt upset. I felt sad. I felt happy. I felt angry. Like it was good. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this reading vlog. A little bit different from the last reading vlog that I did. Let me grab this off the floor. But yeah. Yeah. As I am recording this, like I said, it is the 27th. The book is going to be released in three days. I cannot wait. So, again, like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm going to say it again at the end of this video. Happy release day to um, The Heart of a King by Jill Eileen Smith. Beautiful book. I definitely recommend it. Um, I'm still going to definitely read the novellas to see what the differences are. The novellas are, like I said, less than 100 pages or so. So, I'm still going to read the novellas to see what the differences are. But, I definitely would say you don't personally read, need to read them if you haven't read the novellas and this will still be a good read but um i'm gonna end this vlog here one because the video is like over an hour long that's number one um and two there's a lot of banging and the smoke detector is going off for no reason and i bet you when i stop this video it won't go off it's a conspiracy i don't care but yes i'm gonna organize my books and i will have that video for you guys coming on my book cart um i'm still getting a rose gold one eventually i'm gonna order it but for now, we have mint and we have white. And I don't think I'm going to separate my secular books from my Christian books. I think I'm just going to keep one as like a to-be-read cart, which will be the books that I'm going to read for the month. And then the white cart will have all of the books that I actually need to haul because you guys might get too many books in the mail. I don't just get Christian-related books. I get like regular books as well from companies to review. So yeah, if you guys see my cart right now in my room. Mm. But yeah. Um, so that's it for this video. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this reading vlog. I'm going to try to find different ways to make these reading vlogs more interactive. Not interactive, but um, a little bit more fun than me just sitting in my room reading. Um, maybe I'll do some clips in the kitchen. Maybe I'll do some clips sitting outside. Who knows? But again, thank you guys for watching this video. Highly suggest you guys check out the book. Links will be down below as well as links to my book review. And yeah, that's it for this. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.